Hey there, it's Bobby Legs, and welcome to another episode of Bobby Legs Loves Watches. And today I will be reviewing the Seiko Flightmaster SNA411. Now, I like to thank James over at the Greek Ambino channel and Chris over at the Watch Lounge for lending this watch in for review. It's because of the great relationships that I developed um, over the last year or two um, with subscribers and, and other YouTube content creators like James and Chris that I'm able to get watches into the channel for review and continuously provide content. Now, before I get into this review, please remember to like and subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications every time I upload new videos. I love making these videos and I hope you like them too. So let's get on with the review. Let's jump right into the specs. We have a 42 millimeter case diameter. I, I would say approximately, I measured a little less, but you do have this bezel that lifts out over the case a little bit here. I got a 44 millimeter lug width. Uh, now you do have these end links that come out a little bit here. So you're gonna, I got a measurement of 49.5 millimeters. So keep that in mind. I got a 21 millimeter lug width, 13 millimeter case thickness on the nose, slightly domed hardlex crystal kind of reminds me though of those acrylic crystals that you see on some vintage watches look how it plays with the reflection with the angle of the dial uh, very very cool stainless steel case and bracelet the bracelet has brushed outer links polished center link with a seam going down the middle uh you know i <laughs> at first i thought that they put two pieces of metal together. Why would they do that? But I, I realized that that's not the case, I believe, and that's more of an aesthetic, a stylistic uh, decision. Uh, anyway, um, stamped clasp, fold over, push, uh, double push button. The clasp is slightly thinner than the bracelet. So interesting choices here by Seiko uh, with the bracelet to uh, micro adjust. Um, now, the push pin uh, system here for changing the lengths, it's not screwed down. So you'll see this push pin system and you can see the arrow pointing at the direction uh, where to push. Uh, you'll, you'll see this a lot in some of the affordable watches in the uh, Seiko lineup that have uh, bracelets. But overall, I mean, the bracelet's very, very comfortable. I got no complaints. It's just some interesting decisions there. Screw down a case back, as you can see. This has 200 meter water resistance, so you do have a screw down crown. Screw down chronograph pushers. Speaking of chronograph, it is powered by the Caliber uh, 7T62 quartz chronograph movement. Uh, the power, the battery life on these, uh, you know, run typically around three years. Uh, anyway, so uh, going back to the bezel, you do have this nice aggressive coin edge bezel here. Friction base goes back and forth, uh, uni uh, bi-directional. Let's get a weight here. Um, let's bring out the scale. Let's see if it'll behave properly today. Let's zero out. And I'm getting 150 grams on the nose as it is configured with the links in the bracelet. Uh, now the star of the show is obviously the uh, dial. You got so much going on, not only on the bezel, which appears to have a, uh, a compass as well as a lot of information uh, here. You can, this is um, a flight watch, right? So um, it's got some calculations that you can um, perform it has an E6B navigational slide rule. And so some of those functionalities you can do here are calculations, uh, multiplication, division, square root, um, ETA, speed, fuel consumption, climbing attitude, climbing rate, um, unit conversions, distance conversion, fuel volume conversion, weight conversion, and fuel volume to weight conversion. So uh, I've seen, you know, pilots post pictures online uh, with this watch on. So it is definitely being used for sure. Um, like I mentioned before, this is a chronograph. So the push button here uh, will engage that cool yellow uh, chronograph hand. 
uh, sorry for bumping the camera, uh, stop and then so weep as you see a lot with Quartz Chronos. At the six o'clock uh, register, you do have a um, alarm and also could double as a second time zone. Nine o'clock is the running seconds with a tick, a quartz tick, of course, and at 12 o'clock, a 60 minute uh, counter for the chronograph. Applied uh, our indices at the one, two, four, five, seven, eight, 10, 11. Applied Seiko chronograph 200 uh, meter water resistance there at the three with a date window. Uh, very, very cool watch. Very, very legendary and iconic. Let me put this uh, guy on wrist to show you a wrist shot. Now I have six and three quarter inch wrists and this watch fits really, really great on wrist. It really does. It sits really well. Um, like most Seikos, it typically wears smaller than the um, than what is uh, the, what it's spec'd out for. Um, the lug to lug is short. Um, that helps even though those end links do come out at the edge over there. Super fun watches. MSRPs I see here online just under three hundred dollars. Uh, every once in a while, drop that website um, will come out with uh, a run, and uh, you can get it for uh, less. So much fun! A lot. It certainly packs a whole lot. I would say for the price. Sure, there's some interesting choices they make. The bracelet is uh, is interesting with all its quirks. Uh, the 21 millimeter lug width kind of you kind of like. Uh, I really I'm no expert on bracelets, right? So. Um, but uh, I don't really see too many 21 millimeter bracelets. Now, straps and NATOs, different story. Uh, I know a lot of people, it's their pet peeve that it's an odd um, number um, measurement on the lug to lug. But to be honest, you can find there's a, so many options out there for 21 millimeter straps and NATO. It's almost like, you know, enough with the complaining. It is what it is. Uh, I, I'll, you know, I gotta admit something, guys. So I'm a terrible flyer. I am terrified on an airplane. I've flown so many times in my life, I still get terrified. And um, it's, you know, I know that most accidents happen the first 20 minutes and the last 20 minutes of flight, statistically. That's not the part that bothers me. I actually, you know, if it's a little bumpy uh, on ascent or descent, I'm, I'm fine with that. It's when I'm up in the air, 35,000 feet, two hours into the flight, calm nothing you know it's all fine and then like you get that gust uh gust of um of turbulence and the plane shakes for like an hour and it's just like oh i hate that so much so what helps me is uh i'll stare at the that lcd screen that's um behind the 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 chair in front of me and usually um there's an option for uh, the gps tracker where you can follow the plane and sometimes some planes will even tell you the airspeed it's going on how many miles per hour it's going on uh, Etc. And um, and so like this would be a fun addition for me to help calm me down. <laughs> I have so many rituals, man. When I'm on a plane and right before I go on a plane, it's ridiculous. It's silly. It's embarrassing. Um, but anything that will help me get through, if I can, you know, help find what the uh, verify the the air distance, uh, the speed, um, and how far uh, we're going, how fast we're going. Um, if I could verify that, uh, juxtapose it with the information on the GPS screen in front of me, that would keep me occupied and happy. <laughs> I know. Bananas. Anyway, I get it. I, I understand why people love this watch. It's a lot of fun. Um, it has its quirks, um, but that's okay with me. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about uh, this watch. Please put a comment uh, down below, and I'll see you guys soon in the next video.